Butterflies are amazing. And in this video, we are going to explore what butterflies can teach us about nature and ourselves. Coming up right after this. We are at the Cambridge Butterfly Conservatory in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. So we're gonna go into this butterfly conservatory. In the and middle of nowhere. <laughs> and we're gonna learn about butterflies and some other cool stuff. Oh my goodness. And all of a sudden, it's like we are in the tropics. <laughs> it is warm and balmy and humid and sticky. It's up. The camera's starting to fog up. The butterflies are flying all around us. few animals that exude more innocence than a butterfly. With their gentle movements, fragile bodies, and gorgeous colors, they are arguably the most admired insects by humans. Whether you see a butterfly in your backyard or in a self-contained, hot and humid greenhouse, encountering a butterfly is a pleasant experience, if anything. But when passing a butterfly, some people might not even notice it. Some more people might acknowledge the beautiful creature, but they will simply just say something like, oh, that is a pretty butterfly. But when a passionate naturalist or biologist sees one of these extravagant animals, he or she will more closely observe the creature and his or her mind may start to swirl with all kinds of thoughts about its natural history and conservation. When I see a butterfly, I am reminded of the many peculiar ways that nature operates that might seem counterintuitive to the norms of human beings. For example, when I see a butterfly, I am reminded that the world humans perceive is only one point of view. We have our own five senses, one of which is taste, which we do with our tongue, but butterflies can taste with their feet. When determining where to lay her eggs, a female butterfly will land on different plants, drumming the leaves with her feet. Spines on the back of her legs have chemoreceptors that detect the right match of plant chemicals, and when she identifies the right plant, she lays her eggs. Butterflies can also see an ultraviolet wavelengths of light that humans cannot and are very visual creatures in part due to the visual component of their food sources, which are flowers. Along with other pollinating insects, they have co-evolved with flowering plants for millions of years in a mutualistic symbiotic relationship. The flower provides a reward to the butterfly by providing a food source in the form of nectar and in exchange the butterfly transports the sex cells of the flower to other plants so the plants can sexually reproduce. This tight-knit relationship between pollinating insects and flowering plants exists across the earth and it is crucial to the sustainability of our crops and therefore the well-being of humans. So whenever you see a butterfly land on a flower, I hope you are reminded why we need to protect pollinating insects as much as anything else. It's like 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside in the middle of Ontario, but inside in here, Ooh, it's, it's balmy. probably, it's at least in the 80s. It's only been a few minutes and I'm sweating already. This is what it's like when you go into a tropical rainforest. What is this place? <laughs> this is our emergence window, so we put all of our butterflies that we get shipped in. So all of these butterflies are native to the Philippines and Costa Rica? or yeah, so okay. no native ones to North America at all. Get them all from sustainable breeding farms in Costa Rica and the Philippines okay. twice a month. Um, so are they already crystallized when they send them? Yes. Yeah, Very cool. Like a literal box in the mail that we get them in. Very cool. So then you guys set them up in here and then wait for them to emerge, dry their wings out, and then fly out here, right? Um, what's actually really cool is that we have uh, the world's largest moths here. So this is actually the Atlas moth. These are both males. The world's largest moths here. Yeah. So they're wow. both males because of the big bushy antenna there. Wow. 
The colors of butterflies are perhaps their most captivating feature, but they are even more captivating when you realize the complexity of their function. Part of the purpose of color in butterflies is mate recognition, and it has evolved in part due to sexual selection. But also, as you might expect, Butterflies are relatively low on the food chain and have very visual predators like birds. The coloring of many butterflies, especially in the tropics, has evolved to deter predators. As you might expect, bright colors may warn a predator that the animal is poisonous or distasteful, but this warning might not always be truthful. Some butterflies that would make totally healthy and tasty meals have evolved to mimic butterflies that are not palatable, fooling the predator, which is called Batesian mimicry. The species mimicking one another might not even be closely related evolutionarily, which is known as convergent evolution. An array of similarly colored butterflies fluttering before you is a reminder that natural selection is always at work and is almost always more complex than you first imagined. Perhaps the works of natural selection are best demonstrated in a butterfly's life cycle. Most butterflies live only a few weeks to a few months, and only the ones that migrate long distances like monarchs live a bit longer than that. They will lay many eggs and will completely abandon them. A larva will hatch, grow, metamorphosize, and emerge from its pupa with no parental care. Watching a new butterfly emerge helplessly with wet wings can be an emotional experience, mostly because the new butterfly is so vulnerable. The lack of parental care in a butterfly's life cycle may cause some humans to mourn for them, but you need to see this in the context of natural selection. Like most all invertebrates, butterflies are great examples of species with low parental investment and a trade-off for high offspring numbers. Any animal needs to balance the number of offspring it will reproduce with the amount of parental care given to increase the chance chances of offspring survival because both require energy. The reproductive strategies of animals can be placed along a broad spectrum and butterflies are on the low investment extreme of that spectrum, while humans, which live long lives, produce relatively few offspring and care enormously for their offspring, are on the opposite side of the spectrum. So just remember, according to science, the way that humans do things is the way that evolution played out. Just because something is normal in our view does not mean it is the right way to do things in the context of the animal kingdom. I'm reminded of this when I observe butterflies and all other organisms that we share a planet with. So next time you see a butterfly, I hope you do more than just telling yourself that it is simply a beautiful creature because it is much more beautiful than what only meets the eye. The real beauty of nature lies in understanding how it works, and the more we understand how nature works, the more we will understand how we can function in harmony with nature. So that's cool. I'm, I, I'm like a snake holder, oh, tarantula awesome. holder. Absolutely. Very cool. So what so, kind of insect is this? It's a type of walking stick called a thorny devil walking stick. A Whoa. thorny devil walking stick. Wow. Going up for kiss. That's tickled. <laughs> That's your egg layer, your overpositive. Wow, what wow. a beautiful insect. So these Crazy. guys, his name is Chuck. This is Chuck. <laughs> Chuck the hissing cockroach. <laughs> I love being videoed like this. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. Hissing cockroach from Madagascar. She's talking about the spiracles on its body where it breathes. See how small they have wings. They're like part camouflage. They look like leaves. Oh, And they're, okay, they're okay. part bestial. Wow, she likes you. Truly amazing creature. Yeah, wow. You gonna put that on the video? <laughs> <laughs>